Hey Mustangs! Today I'm going to attempt to show you how to stretch your mask on your cardboard. You will probably need some help, but I want this video so you can go back and check. First you want to make sure you've got the inside touching the cardboard and the outer edge that you are going to be drawing on facing you. The first couple are the hardest, but you're going to take the edge and curve it over the back of your cardboard piece. And take a sticky tack and stick it in the cardboard. These are sharp. Please do not stab yourself. And if you do, I have band-aids. Okay, like that. I then recommend stretching the opposite diagonal the other side. Round to the back. I kind of pin the pin in at a little bit of an angle, but make sure you go in to the cardboard. Takes a little bit of force. That one went through, so I got a pokey side there. Make sure you don't poke yourself while you're coloring. And then you do the third. Oh, look, that one bent. That's because the cardboard bent, so we'll fix that. And then wrap it around. You may find the corners to bend, so then I would stick it in farther on down, okay? What you want is your fabric to be stretched because it is very difficult to sketch on fabric. And if you don't have anything holding it, you'll get bumps and lumps and not the perfectly straight lines that you need. So from here you begin to add in your design with a thin tip sharpie or an ink pen. So here I have my completed design. Uh, you don't have to outline your rough draft. I only did so you could see it better. So now I am going to attempt to transfer it onto my actual fabric mask. As you can see, it's cardboard and I have four little thumbtacks, which I will show you how to attach. So you have a nice smooth surface. So you really want to have this surface smooth because you will find that fabric moves when you draw on it a little different than a piece of paper. So I am looking and redrawing. It, you can't trace, it's too, this is too thick of fabric to see through. I had planned on y'all actually being able to trace. Let me make sure my Sharpie works. So you're just going to look and draw. And when things like that happen, life, life moves on. Taking your time, if you put your fingers on it, that's an, also a really good way to help keep it. Study, and then you just keep going. If you make it smaller than your original design, you just might find that you have to add more. Or vice versa, if you make it too big, you might find that you won't have as many. So let's get that drawn on with those fine tipped or thick tipped Sharpies depending on your design. So now we have a nice basic outline for our mask. Now comes the color. Uh, there's no color schemes, but I'll tell you these are the fabric marker colors that you have available. I kind of have a little bit of an idea in mind uh, for mine, but I want you to see how these work. So they're obviously not like super fine tip, and I have some super fine spaces. So when you're doing a fabric project, Parts of it you may want to leave white. I probably won't. 
you know how I feel about white. But on a section like this, you would want to do the background color first. And you will see it does bleed a little. So if you can kind of see the close up, I'm leaving a little bit of space in between that line that's my outline and that circle just in case the fabric marker bleeds into it. Because what if I want that to be like a really bright orange? So you're going to start and work backwards. I do suggest having some sort of color scheme in mind. Remember, this will be on your face. We're going to be showing these off. Who knows, maybe y'all can sell them to your friends. I say that because people pay for these things left and right now, right? So then I would continue on with my gray. What I will not do is immediately do my dots. You want to let the fabric marker kind of dry. It's almost like a paint. So I'd continue this way and then I would come back later. I will show you the purple next to the gray. And as you can see, I'm leaving that little bit of space again that way if there is any bleed it won't ruin now these two colors blend well together right but if i were to put yellow next to that purple it might not show up so so well so i'm going to continue coloring my mask um and i will show you the finished product soon So I have finished one of my corners of my mask and there are a few suggestions and helpful tips to have the best um, drawing. One, like I said, have a plan. Uh, two, you can definitely layer and you can blend. Um, just know what you're blending and what your, your color choices are. So if I choose to make this blue, When you're coloring big spaces, like coloring back and forth like you normally do with a marker, doesn't necessarily work very well. Also, you'll notice like a grain of the fabric or a direction. If you keep your marker going in the same groove as the lines, you fill in the white spaces. Now obviously up here on my corners, I'm gonna pick that up, right? So, if I were to put in the black right here, the first layer of black is very much the same color as the gray. So, I'm going to leave that and then I will go back and color over it once it's dry. And again, I'm going in that same direction, not coloring, but going and going lightly back and forth really coming into the tips, the using the very tip of the marker when I'm filling in little places. The other thing is you'll notice that the Sharpie lines disappear a little. So you have to decide if you plan on going back over that with a Sharpie or if you're going to use that black fabric marker or if you maybe don't use that outline. Remember, I also used a very skinny tip Sharpie you may find you use the thicker one from the beginning and use it more as like a coloring book outline. Again, you see this way, there's bunches, right? If you go with the grain of the fabric and keep it real solid and flat, you'll get good color. You will find that different markers have different um, intensities. I feel like these are pretty... Uh, brightly colored, but then like the purple isn't exactly the purple I want. So I can also, remember how I told you you can layer? You can go back in 
and get a more saturated color. And I did do the edge of that with the blue, so I'm gonna do that again. And then if you really wanna go crazy with the value while it's still wet, put a little purple back in and it bleeds. So you can see the difference between this one and this one. So that is an option for your masks. I am not requiring it, but I know some of you will do it. Uh, that's just who you are. And some of you just like more um, of that vivid, vibrant, bright, bright color. So these are a few tips. Take your time. Keep your design simple. Simple is best. And I know that mine is pretty complex. But I also want you to see how much time I'm putting into it to make it look the way I want it to. If you have a plan to have a very complex design, just make sure you're ready to put forth the effort. Otherwise, you can keep it simple and colorful. We are artists, and so we get choices. And this is a very choice-based choice -based project uh, on the level of intensity that you plan on giving. You have all week to do this. Don't spend much time on the design. Spend more time on the mask itself. Have fun, and I will show you the finished product shortly. Here is my finished mask de design. I'm going to set these for you in the classroom with an iron. And then happy wearing.